Hey guys, it's Zach here with Aldeck, and today I'm going to give an introduction to FPGA simulation, as well as a brief introduction into our simulator tool, Riviera Pro. FPGAs were introduced in 1984, which is around the same time that Aldeck was founded. Since introduction to market, engineers have needed a way to design and simulate FPGA hardware. As sizes grew, advanced debugging and simulation techniques became crucial. There was a growing need for design verification and similarly, high power advanced simulators. All designs, no matter the size, require functional and timing simulation because these results will tell you how the device will operate in any large scale design. Functional simulation is a process that engineers use to verify operational logic of the circuit just so that they can verify that the circuit works as expected logically. Timing simulation, verifying that gate delays in your targeted device will not hinder the operation. For simulation purposes, an SDF, otherwise known as a standard delay format file, is used to provide gate propagation times for targeted devices. And stepping and breakpoints allow you to uh, verify in a test bench or design file independent, independent points of the design or simulation. Verification methods can include visual simulation verification as well as using a hardware description language to break up and simulate parts of your design or design as a whole. Many models have been adapted to help simulate various types of designs such as MATLAB or AXI based test bench models. So let's go ahead and take a step through a counter design and test bench. So here I have Riviera Pro open and uh, I have just a simple counter design with a uh, test bench uh, to go ahead and go into looking into uh, simulating using a waveform and a test bench. So what I'd like to do first is uh, compile the, our designs and then uh, initialize the simulation on our counter design. And uh, the counter by the way is just a regular up counter, uh, four bit up counter. Um, okay, so we initialize our design and then you can go into a waveform. You can open up a new one. I had one open. Um, and if you see our objects viewer over here, you can actually select all your signals and drag them uh, onto your waveform. And so we have our signals on our waveform now. And now all we would have to do uh, is set the stimulus for our input values. So we have an input uh, clock and an input clear. So if we right click on the signal that we'd like to uh, set, we can uh, click set stimulus and it'll give you all these different options uh, for setting your stimulus. You can uh, set a clock stimulus, a counter, uh, formula, which gives you allows you to set specific values at specific times, uh, the random, which will uh, provide a random input signal, custom, which you can use a previous waveform to stimulate uh, your clock or whatever signal, a uh, text val or text file as well as uh, a solid value zero one or whatever you'd like to use. So for our clock, we're going to go ahead and set um, going to go ahead and set at a one hundred nanosecond period. All right, and then for our clear, um, we're going to go ahead and use a formula. And we're going to start it off at one with zero nanosecond offset. And then we're going to have it go down to zero at 70 nanoseconds. All right, so now that we have our stimulus set, we can actually go ahead and run our simulation. So in order to run simulation, you can see up here we have this run for button and we also have this interval. Uh, box. So I set my interval for one microsecond. You can change it to milliseconds. You can change it to whatever interval you'd like to be able to run for. Um, so I have it set to one microsecond, so we're ready to simulate. So I can actually go ahead and hit run for one microsecond, and you can see that the simulation has um, gone exactly one microsecond. And then you can use this multiple times and uh, continuously and just watch your uh, simulation uh, progress. So that's pretty much how you would uh, simulate a design using our waveform viewer. Now I'd like to take a look at using uh, the test bench. So if we open up our test bench, 
uh, you can see that it looks like a regular VHDL file and um, we're actually stimulating our signals from here. So in order to simulate a test bench, what you'd like to do is um, in the simulation, in your previous simulation at least, and then go back and uh, recompile your designs. And then if you come into your libraries, uh, you can see the test bench entity right here and then you can initialize simulation on that. And as you can see over here in the objects viewer, we have more signals that have been populated. So these are the signals that are found inside of the test bench, which will be testing our counter design. So if we can go ahead and drag these signals onto our waveform, and um, now they'll be initialized in our waveform. So what we'd like to do actually before we run the simulation um, is set a breakpoint in our uh, in, in our test bench. And the breakpoint will pause the simulation at uh, whenever this happens inside of the simulation. So for this specific example, I would like to set a breakpoint when clear goes high for the second time in our stimulus. So uh, now that we have that set, all the stimulus is provided through our test bench. So all we have to do is hit run all and it'll run the whole simulation. So you can see I hit run all and then it, find, it did hit this uh, time when it was supposed to go high. And if we go back to our uh, waveform, you can see um, it has paused our simulation at the time where it's expected to go high. So um, say you were expecting something to happen at this point. Um, one of the nice things to be able to open up is our data flow, our advanced data flow. And you can drag all of your signals onto this as well. And you can actually uh, see all the signals propagating through your device. So if you were expecting uh, certain values at specific signals at this time, you'd actually be able to go in here and take a look at what everything is receiving. So we hit our breakpoint and we want to continue our simulation. So you can just go ahead and hit run all and uh, it finished our simulation. So now that we finished our simulation, um, we can uh, verify in the data flow all the values are exactly what we'd expect them to be and uh, there's nothing left in the test bench to simulate. The tool used in this video was Riviera Pro, which is provided by Aldec. Riviera Pro is a high-performance simulation and debugging tool. It provides the simulation power needed to develop highly complex designs and debugging tools to ensure they're working correctly. Riviera Pro has debugging features such as showing design data flow, memory visualization, X-Trace, as well as full UVM support and toolbox. It also has mixed language support for seamless compilation and simulation of your designs. Riviera's assertion and coverage tools make designing easier and decreases debugging time. For questions about the software, contact Aldec. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.